We now get into several letters that were written by uh, two nephews to their Aunt Celia. The letter is addressed to Mrs. Celia Mitchell, Orangeville, Genesee County, New York. It's notated single, meaning it's a one-page letter. 20 cents postage has been applied. Enfield, December 28th, 1843. Aunt Celia. Your letter dated March 26 was received in due time and having now a few leisure moments, I will attempt to write a few lines to you informing you how things go on in this place. Uncle Elkanah is sick and appears to be fast declining. His complaint is exactly the same as that of my adored mother, died of VIR period, a disease of the liver. It is not probable that he can live long unless he finds some immediate relief of which I fear there is no prospect. He has labored very hard for 12 years past at his trade. He has done much beyond his strength. He has often gone on foot from six to 10 miles every week to and from his work for a whole season. He is much emaciated. His lips are colorless and I will assure you he looks like a ghost. The rest of our connections here are in tolerable health. Uncle Samuel lives on the old place. He wished you would try to gain some information respecting Aunt Mary, and should you be so fortunate as to receive any information, to lose no time in transmitting it here. My father was married the 2nd of April, after mother's death, to a Mrs. Fanny Joslin, formerly Fanny Gilbert, an own cousin to you and mother. She is a fine woman and has done much for our family. They think much of her. Fenelon, in particular, regards her as affectionately as though she were his own mother. I think we all have abundant reason to love and honor her. After mother died, we were left in a sad condition. It was impossible to hire anyone to keep house, even for a short time, and had it not been for her, my father would have been compelled to break up keeping house and have the children kept as best he could. I was married January 5th, 1841, to Melissa Jane, daughter of Samuel Lemon, of Ware. We have three daughters whose names and ages are as follows. Frances Minerva, born September 27th, 1841, Mary Jerusha, born October 11th, 1842, and Carolyn Maria, born October 5th, 1843. So you see, we work well in the new rule of subtraction. Three from two, leave five. I live on the place my father did when you left here. Father has bought the Jonathan Russell farm and lives there with the rest of the family. I have an addition to the farm my father used to own, bought 52 and one half acres of the old Barney Newcomb farm for which I pay $600. I have now a farm of 150 acres but I find it is larger than I can manage profitably and I should like to sell it. If I could sell, I should make you a visit and possibly buy in that region. I have saved some peach stones of choice kinds for you, but I have, no, but I have had no opportunity of sending them. But I shall send them the first that offers. They should be planted in the fall of the same season they grow to ensure their vegetating. Charles, Uncle Ekanah's oldest, was married October 1842 to a girl by the name of Julia Davis, and they have a son, six weeks old, which they name Otis Lyman. 
Elbridge is at work in the factories at Conway, Massachusetts. We have had a fine season here. Crops of all kinds abundant and produce of all kinds plenty and cheap. Corn in lots of 50 to 100 bushels and illegible. 58 to 60 cents per bushel. Rye from 60 to 65. Oats from 25 to 30 cents per bushel. Pork is selling at four and a half to five dollars per hundred. Beef at two dollars and fifty cents to three dollars per hundred. Stock of all kinds is plenty and cheap. The weather is the weather now is moderate. We have about one foot of snow, all nice and level, and it is first rate sleighing. Please remember me to my aged grandmother. Tell her I recollect her well and should be extremely glad to see her. Give my love to Uncle Lyman and Henry and their families. Likewise to your husband. I have not learned his Christian name. And your own. Please write as soon and often as convenient. It always gives me great pleasure to hear from my friends in that part of the country and I expect you are the only one that will take the trouble to write. Wishing you health and all the happiness that falls to the lot of illegible. I subscribe myself, your affectionate nephew, John H. Howe.